So I decided that I'm going to be uploading a lot more of my diary, video vlog diary things, just for my own well-being and for my own sense of speaking out and doing things and trying to, to get my thoughts together. Um, so this isn't really for my subscribers to be entertained. I'm not even surprised that I maintained as many subscribers as I had because I'm such a bad YouTuber. Um, originally when I started YouTube, I was thinking of trying to um, put it into my, my acting career and kind of try to marry the two and become like a YouTube personality so like actress and maybe I could promote myself through my YouTube and promote my YouTube through my acting and it was supposed to be this big career thing. But um, YouTube is really hard to do for a living. Like it's a lot of work. It's even, I would even say, just in my opinion, YouTube is harder to do than being a traditional actor. Even if you're a stage, screen, and television actor, YouTube is really challenging because you have to figure out your own marketing, you have to figure out your own brand, and then you have to promote it, and you have to find out what is it that the audience wants to see me do. And sometimes it's not always what you want to do. Like I made a YouTube video, my most popular YouTube video I think to date is um, the one where I was talking about why do girls kick guys in the balls and I know that that was some sort of fetish thing and I even made a video talking about it but to this day I still get guys from that fetish community asking me hey could you make another video talking about why girls kick guys in the balls can you make a video where you pretend to kick the camera the, like play some role playing where the camera person is that there and you're gonna kick them in the balls and stuff and I'm like I don't want this to be a fetish channel <laughs> I didn't want that's not what I wanted when I started on YouTube and I don't want that and I just kind of ignore those requests um, so yeah doing YouTube is a bit of a challenge it was too much of a challenge for me and I started working with another youtuber by the name of Beanmeister 22 at the time who was actually more successful at YouTube than I was, because I guess he has a better sense of it. And um, he gave me a lot of chances to do collab videos and stuff like that, and it was really great. And I did, and I promoted the videos that he would tr want me to promote on my channel, and he would promote me, and it, would, it, was a, it was kind of a really nice relationship. But ultimately, I just decided that YouTube should just remain a hobby for me, and it shouldn't be a, a career. Um, and it's now even not becoming a hobby as much as it is just becoming a catharsis for me where I can come and talk about things that I'm experiencing and stuff like that. So that's what this video is. And I think I'm gonna upload more videos like this where I'm just basically just saying what's on my mind. Um, I don't expect to get very many views on this and I probably will lose subscribers because nobody really cares what I think about shit. But this isn't about you guys, it's about me. I already have my other stuff my other acting and my other the other things that I'm doing in my life um, and one of the things that I'm focusing a lot on my life is writing I decided that this year I am going to do NaNoWriMo, NaNoWriMo which is a little nerve-wracking I've been thinking about doing NaNoWriMo for some time now and I just never had the nerve to do it but I do love writing and I do want my writing t career to flourish and I'm, I'm even putting acting a little bit on the side and trying to focus more on my writing at this point because it's just become my focus at the moment. Um, and I'm learning a lot in doing that. <laughs> Got a bug flying around. Um, I I, ever since I was a kid, the best way I could express myself was through either drawing pictures or writing. And I was pretty good at drawing, but I was even better at writing. I loved to read. Growing up, my father was an avid reader, and he would always have a book to read. And my sister was an avid reader, and I kind of guess it was monkey see, monkey do, because then I became an avid reader. My mother loved classic books and she would read um, like Shakespeare to my sister and I and Canterbury Tales and um, 
one of the books that she read to us was House, I think it was House of Seven Gables, and, um, what was it, House of Seven Gables or Anna Green Gables? I don't remember, she read something to us about Gables, <laughs> and I don't remember which one of these two books it was, but, you know, I always loved writing as a kid. It was my way of relating to the world. Um, I always knew I wanted to be an actress. That was just my career. Just, I just Since the age of seven, I said, I want to perform on the stage, and I want to perform on the screen. I just That was what I wanted to do. I wanted to act. But I also loved writing with all my heart. And um, I have bins and bins of these notebooks where I would just write. Um, ever since I was like 11 years old, it's when I started writing the most and I would just write all these little short stories mostly fantasy based stories about fairies and stuff like that and um, I never actually considered turning it into a career to be honest with you I always thought that maybe one day I might try that but I never really focused on it seriously until I met my husband who told me well if you're going to be a writer you're, you have to write and that's why he gave me time off of my job. I quit my job working as a cocktail waitress slash bartender, where I was making good money. And uh, took some time off to write. And it changed my, pers my, my perspective of what I actually want to do with my life. And while I still enjoy acting, and it's what I love to do. I was a professional actress in New York. Um, I've done film, screen, uh, film, television, stage acting. I've performed in huge theaters um, of like 375 plus seats or more. Um, I even got to go on a, a, sh a small tour with a theater company. Uh, there's a vi YouTube video on here called... Um, Alana Vital reacts to Two Girls, One Cup, and you'll see that I'm sitting on a hotel bed with another young woman, and there's a few male voices in the background. I was actually at that point on tour, um, performing in Cinderella, where I played the part of Cinderella, believe it or not. Um, and we were touring from south in, um, God, what was it, Key Largo, all the way up to Tampa. We were doing shows. And it was a fantastic uh, tour until it, things went south between me and the company because they began to breach their contract. And um, the tour was supposed to end in August, and they kept booking more shows. I guess the show was popular enough to keep booking. And my contract ended, and they kept expecting us to continue with the contract because some of the other uh, performers in the show, some of the other cast members were actually employees of the company. And I told them, I can't do that. I do have a day job. And while your company pays great, you're not going to give me unemployment. And I need money for the rest of the year. And I really don't want to lose my day job. Is that okay? <laughs> you know. Anyway, um, that went south because they kept booking me and booking me. And then they, had, they wanted to use me in, a, I believe, two other productions, which I agreed to. But then I started, I started getting... Um, Frazzled. I was at the end of my rope because um, my other, my day job was, you know, being a cocktail waitress. And believe it or not, cocktail waitresses can make a lot of money. I would make about $250 to $300 a day working an eight-hour shift. And that was working the day shift. If I worked the night shift, I would probably make more. <laughs> So, you know, there were some girls taking home $700 a day. So, you know, working as a, if you're, well, yeah, this was a couple pounds ago, but if you're pretty enough to work as a cocktail waitress or a shot girl or a bartender, it's a great job to have, but it does kind of condition you to get used to that amount of money in your lifestyle. And then you get a little dependent on that. And at the time, I think I was living on my own, so... It was just really difficult to balance that and the theater company and the theater company kept breaching their contract and then they would send me a new tour book that wouldn't be accurate, it would be last year's tour book, so I wouldn't get my dates correctly, so then I would have to call in sick and then I would get a write up and you know, it just became chaotic and for the money I was making, 
with the theater company, it was not enough. This obviously was a non-union. It was not enough to keep me afloat, you know, without my day job. So it just, it just all kind of basically fell to pieces. And this is a Florida-based company. So if this was a New York-based company, like my other, the other theater company that I did up, um, in Central Park, that we were doing um, children's theater in Central Park and Queen's Zoo. There was like a, for a while, there was a thing called Wildlife Theater where they would uh, perform for the children in the summer. And then during the school year, they would actually book shows in schools to do theater, educational theater for children in the New York City school system. It was a great company that fell apart internally because of drama, as companies always do. But, um, you know, that company was a good company to work for and I guess I was a little spoiled because I was getting paid quite a bit of money more money than both my day job and Cinderella combined in South Florida so I I was used to that and then afterward when the contract ended because this was a contract that was funded by the New York City Parks Department when that ended I had the ability to have unemployment for the remainder of the year. And so I'm used to that type of treatment. And a lot of the performers in that show were union actors, so it followed union um, equity guidelines of how to treat performers. So to go from that to what happened with Cinderella, where there was the breach of contract and then Originally, they were going to pay, during the audition, it said they were going to pay a certain amount, and then they said, oh, we can't pay you that much. We have to give you a smaller percentage of that. And then, oh, well, you know, because you couldn't book this show, we're going to dock your pay for this period of time, and, you know, all this other stuff, because of loss of funds. They played, they, they played some shady games. But, I don't know why I started talking about theater. But, anyway, that run of Cinderella... When you see my video, Two Girls, One Cup, we were touring, and I think at the point we were in Tampa, and um, we were going to perform at the, I think, the Tampa Theater, Tampa, Tampa, it was a big theater, beautiful theater, um, and so, you know, that was always the focus of my career. I have always wanted to just do acting. Um, I also did some independent film. I was in many other films that are not um, in New York in particular. I did more film, I think I did more film work in New York than South Florida. Oh no, that's not entirely true. Because this, there was a couple of films that I did that were shooting in South Florida but were from out of the country. There was a Brazilian company that came in and they were doing an entire film called uh, uh, Fisherman and His Soul. And the entire film was shot on green screen and the world that it was a fantasy world and the world that inhabited was supposed to be um, computer generated very similar to the mirror mask um, from Jim Henson's company and I was to play the witch I always play the witch and I am a witch so that's funny but anyway acting great fantastic modeling great fantastic writing something I always thought of in the back of my head then my husband said why don't you just focus on it more because it's not gonna get done unless you focus on it more when I focused on it more, I was like, wow, this is something I really, really want to pursue. So, for the time being, I am in a market that there isn't as much acting work anyway down here. And I'm not modeling anymore. Um, obviously, I've put on some weight, so it's going to make it a little bit more of a challenge to get modeling gigs. And I decided, you know what? I think I want to write. So, I wrote the manuscript. And was I was sending it out. Hey, Bo. Watson's coming and say hi. Remember when I first got him? And he was this, like, puppy who kept climbing all over me. Now he's an old boy. Look, he's got, like, gray on his mouth. He's a good boy. Um, when my husband told me to write the manuscript, it just opened my eyes to this whole world of writing. And so, I, I, yes, I submitted my manuscript to a few literary agents, and I never heard back from pretty much most of them, and a few publishing companies. And one publishing company out in London contacted me and said that they were interested, but they seemed to have a not-so-awesome uh, 
you know, reputation in. And then it, it's learned, or then I learned that they are kind of a little bit of a subsidy press. And I, well, there's nothing wrong with that. I just, you know, was like, mm, you know. So that, you know, fell through. And then I began performing for um, a few, I, I perform at a few Renaissance festivals and, and things like that. Um, starting from, and I actually got the idea to start performing at the Renaissance festivals uh, from an actress that I worked with in New York who performed at the New York, or no, I'm sorry, she, she performed at Pennsylvania Renaissance Festival or something like that. And she uh, said that working the Renaissance Festivals is so much fun and there's so many creative people. And then that's when I learned about performing outdoors. And I kind of discovered that that's really what I love to do as well. And then in doing that, I met a few people who were creating their own smaller publishing company. And, they, and it was an up-and-coming publishing company. And, you know, I submitted my work to them and they said they're interested in publishing. So right now I'm currently um, just... Honey, I'm just taking the manuscript and I'm cleaning it up well enough so that they can actually publish it and we'll see what goes from there, you know? So that's that's there. That's what I want to do. But as far as, you know, honing my skills as a writer, I don't have very many writing credits. I have I wrote two plays that were one of which was actually put into production recently at a theater company. No, it's not a theater company. It's actually a theater that's local. Um, and I made a bargain with the owner of the theater. And I said, I will perform for free, no pay, if you consider putting my script, allowing me to put my script into production. And it seemed like a fairly decent deal. And we ended up putting it into production. And it was great because we ended up getting a backer, a, a couple of good backers, but one particular backer that was fantastic. And we were able to get, um, give very decent pay to our performers for this production. So that was great, you know. And um, so, yes, I do have some writing credits of acting in the acting world as a, as a, as a playwright you know, but as far as writing novels, you know, this is my first novel and I kind of want to get better at it. So I decided this year to do NaNoWriMo. I have a few novel ideas um, that I might, you know, that I've always been playing around, concepts that aren't really that fleshed out, but I've always been playing around with them in my mind and I kind of want to put them on paper. And I thought, hmm, oh, NaNoWriMo's a perfect opportunity to do it. So hopefully soon you'll all see um, this year in November. Oh, also, big news. I am going to Paris, um, which is a very exciting trip. I'm very excited about it. I'm going to, L to London and Paris at the end of this year. And um, which is kind of ironic because originally I was thinking in my head, you know what would be great if I was with that London publisher and I could actually have a meeting face to face and then bam I ended up going uh, having the opportunity to travel to Europe and then I decided that I didn't want to really work with that publisher anyway so I was like eh. so hopefully you'll see some video footage of that that would be awesome and you'll see me do a little bit of a diary for NaNoWriMo this year I'm a little nervous 50,000 words in one month. It took me about a year and a half to finish my first novel. My first manuscript. It's not a novel yet. It's still in the process of, you know, negotiating and publishing with this really awesome up and coming group. Um, I don't know. We'll see where it takes me, you know? But I went to a psychic this year. Every year I go to a psychic, the one psychic that I trust, and she said this year is the year where you have to make things happen. So I'm going to be focusing on my health, which means 
losing some of this weight. And oh yes, I also wanted to do a video diary on that as well. And hopefully I'll be able to look back at some of the videos and say, wow, I actually progressed well. And also to travel more. My psychic said to travel more. So I'm going to be going to London and Europe. And, and, and yeah, London and Paris. Um, and it's going to be a good year, hopefully. So, yes, writing, writing, writing. I'm going to be writing more. Writing was always kind of a thing in my family anyway. I already have... We already have two published writers in my family. Um, granted, they were self-published, but to be able to call yourself a published writer, even if it's self-published, even if it's your first work and you're not sure if it came out exactly the way you wanted it, at least you got it done. There are so many people who start a manuscript and never finish, or they even finish, but they never follow through the process of actually getting it published. And my cousin um, wrote a very small book about her memoirs and some of the, and her father, my uncle, who is a brilliant artist, um, made some beautiful book cover illustrations for her, for her work. And it, it actually became a very nice book. I, I enjoy reading. I enjoyed reading that book. There were some things about it that were very thought provoking and some things that were a little sad, but it was all in all a very beautifully well put together little book that I enjoyed reading. And my uncle, who is all, my other uncle, I have two uncles that are artists. One is a more conventional artist where he actually has a studio in New York, um, in upstate New York, his own private studio where he creates all of his sculptures and his beautiful, beautiful work. And, um, and then my other uncle, who is not a traditional artist per se, but he is an artist in his own right, and he's more of a writer, and he wrote his memoirs together and compiled it into a, a book and had that published. And it was a very nice thing. And who knows where, what will happen. Maybe I will be the third person in our family to have a published work. Um, mine won't be memoirs because I don't really think my memoirs are that interesting. I mean, I've got YouTube for that, so. <laughs> but, you know, hopefully my fiction, I will be, I, I will be the first fiction writer, I think, technically. And no, 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 well, see, my father wrote, a, wrote a, a, a screenplay when he was in college that was fiction, but it, he didn't get to publish it, and they didn't get to put it into production or anything like that, so... Um, yeah, my father went to film school as well, and he was in television broadcasting. So, you know, I'm not going to be the first person in my family to try to write a book and try to get it published and try to market it. But hopefully I will be successful at it. And even if I'm not successful monetarily, I believe that just in doing it and in finishing it and in accomplishing it, I am a success because a lot of people don't even actually get to do that. So... I'm excited. A lot of good things are going to be happening. And um, I'm going to be talking about them here on my YouTube channel because this is my YouTube channel. So I'm sorry. I apologize to all of my subscribers that have subscribed to my YouTube channel in the past because of the ball busting videos because you're not going to see anything like that here. So you might as well just go to another YouTube channel. I apologize to all of my YouTubers who subscribe to my YouTube channel because of all of the coherent sort of kind of nicely edited videos that I had in the past because I'm probably not going to be uploading those as much anymore as you can tell. Um, once in a while I might spit one out just because I feel like editing but I'm not really going to do that as much. This is, I mean look, this video is already 24 minutes and I'm not really, it's, uh, what did I talk about? YouTube, acting, and NaNoWriMo and what I want to do this year and a little bit of family stuff, a little bit of insight for my family. And, you know, this is not coherent. <laughs> but yeah. Um, it's going to be, it's, this is, this is the YouTube channel. You can uns unsubscribe if you want, if it's boring. 
I will probably still rant about feminism and Onision and talk about YouTube drama. Because that's what interests me. Like, right now, this whole Daddy of Five thing's got me all tied up in knots. Like, I'm heartbroken that this had kid had to go through this and, you know, so many people are coming out and saying, hey, you know, I went through that, myself included. And I even made, on my YouTube channel here, I made like a little folder for Cody if he ever, and the off chance and the, uh, the likelihood of this ever happening is extremely rare. And the off chance that Cody grows up and is an okay person and one day decides, gee, I'm going to look up that old show that my stupid father used to do and see whatever, see if I could see that just for my own catharsis and then maybe he can see all of the online support and not just me but everybody there's so many people online that are making videos supporting this poor kid you know? well, that's what I'm thinking about right now last week I was thinking about Onision and how crazy he is and then the week before that I was, I was thinking about Chris Chan and how crazy he is who knows what I'll be making videos about next week. Maybe I'll be making videos about cats or something. But yeah. Alright, I think I'm done talking.